And South Africa is pursuing a comprehensive health care coverage for all as the National Health Insurance Bill was passed earlier this year. But doubts remain about government's capacity to overhaul the country's health care system. There's also the small matter of costs and how the proposed reforms will be funded. And joining us now is Dr. Ali Hamdulay, the CEO at Metropolitan Health Group. Dr. Hamdulay, good afternoon to you and thank you so much for joining us here on All Angles. The NHI, of course, is going to be with us for a very long time. We're even told that time estimates can be as much as 10 to 14 years. But nonetheless, there are certain concerns, especially in the medical fraternity, with uh, the cost implications or what this, uh, uh, the NHI uh, would look like. Your view on what has transpired so far and the progress of the NHI. Hi, good afternoon, Cindy. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Um, yeah, we've the NHI bill has gone through a legislative process. Uh, it's been passed by a national uh, parliament, and uh, it is currently with the National Council of Provinces. And um, it's been making its rounds through the various provinces with public hearings and submissions. And um, I think the expectation is that towards the end of this month, the National Council of Provinces will then decide whether they support the bill or not. And then after that, it goes to the presidency. And we um, patiently await, you know, the final outcome of, of that bill and that legislative process. Yeah, but there's also the, the challenges, of course, that seem insurmountable uh, in terms of the, uh, the implications to not only your private health care sector, but the burden, tax burden on consumers on how the NHI will be funded. Yes, correct. So as it's going through its legislative process, there were initial studies that were done, and um, you know these still have to be refined based on you know current fiscal constraints and you know the challenges that we're experiencing in our economy. And um, I guess uh, part of the process will to will be to review the numbers and then test uh, you know whether it is affordable or not. But I think what is important to note that uh, the National Health Insurance Bill um, speaks to the premise of universal health care. And it is often said that uh, universal health care is the greatest gift a country can give its people. So within the concepts and the challenges that we're experiencing in our access to health care, the quality of health services, um, and then, uh, you know, the drive for, for positive outcomes, it, uh, there is a priority for us to, to try and find a way to um, create the foundation for universal health care. And certainly the bill will, will move in that direction. Yes, and I mean, it's a, a universal right uh, that, especially in your time of need, uh, when you find yourself in hospital, that you would uh, want an environment that is not only sterile, but where the competence and compassion of the medical caregivers uh, is also at a professional level. Now, this is not to, to say that the public uh, health care system does not offer that in, in pockets of excellence where they do reside, but generally it's overstretched, um, under-resourced, and we see a lot of frustration for people who are dependent on the public health care sector. So the NHI is, is a good uh, in, in intervention in that regard. Dr. Ali? Yeah, the, there are challenges in, in the public health sector, um, but we can't be naive and, and believe that there aren't challenges in the private health sector as well. And I mean, we've seen the report from the health market inquiry that speaks to the high cost of health care. So all in all, we have challenges in the country. Um, but what is important is that we recognize what they are and we find a way to work collaboratively towards, the, you know, fixing those challenges. Now, when you look at our population, I mean, we are roughly a population of 60 million. Mm. Dr. Ali, your, your, your line is just a little bit scratchy, so we're going to try and um, patch you on another just line. Just checking, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, I think we, we've got you back. So you were just saying about the challenges, especially the high costs of private health yeah, care, and if, if the NHI would be able to give uh, consumers some relief uh, when it comes to, to the high cost of private health care. Yeah, I think we must manage the expectation of, of the, the, the bill itself. So I think the bill will create a foundation for us to work from. There's obviously a, an important need for us to, to recognize um, processes that will help us you know, overcome those challenges. And so um, within the private sector, the high cost of care, you know, the lack of competition in our environment, overutilization of services is, is, is noted you know, and it is being addressed through, through the various forums. 
But by and large, when you look at our population of 60 million, roughly 60 million, um, 10 million of our, or at least 9 million of our South African populations is covered by private medical care. There's also 6 million South Africans that are employed but uninsured. And it becomes a priority for us to find innovative ways to bring you know, that group of, of people uh, to create access of care for, for those groups of people. And there are various insurance products, but by and large, there is a regulatory reform that is definitely required that uh, are related to what is called the PMBs. And, and that can um, low cost benefit options. And that can help us unlock more benefits and more access to care for those 6 million um, South Africans. Then yes. it's the yeah. onus is upon us to find ways then to improve the, the rest of the health system uh, through funding mechanisms. And funding mechanisms and access, you know, those, those two are is inseparable. Uh, it's important components for us to help uh, create that opportunity for, for our people. Mm. And, and I mean, the added uh, challenges as well, a, a different dynamic that had not been planned for adequately is the migration of people, not only for economic opportunities, but even those across the South African borders who are uh, accessing the healthcare facilities, with many even being critical of the department, saying that your extension of a people-centered um, uh, service is now also um, costing the South Africans their right to healthcare. Yeah, correct. So within the National Health Insurance Bill, they, they have done studies and there's various um, you know, promulgations related to that. But, you know, by and large, as a, as a nation, uh, we need to take care of, of people in our country and we will need to find a way to ensure that, you know, there's collaboration between the different government agencies, you know, be it uh, Department of Home Affairs and the Department of Health. Um, but, but those are things that we need to keep on the agenda and give critical attention to going forward. If we look at international best practice, uh, Dr. Ali, often, you know, if uh, things have been tested, especially in more developed nations, the West, the U.S., etc., uh, and it's then applied anywhere else in the world, we tend to believe that it would fix all our problems. But ours is a unique and a different, uh, you know, we have our own peculiar uh, uh, challenges. What do you think, in the, what the NHI stands for at the moment, uh, whether this is something that can be implemented with ease if all the considerations are taken into account. Yes, no, that's a good, it's a very important point. I mean, when you, when you look around the world, um, there is a blend of private and public sector involvement. Now, one of the um, clauses related to the current bill, uh, and it's uh, in, in reference to Section 33, you know, challenges the sustainability and the continuity of the private sector. Now. While many of our organizations support the bill and, and we as an organization, you know, also support the bill in, in its intention, we find that there are clauses that need, you know, specific address and amendment. And these clauses should make provision for, for the continuity of private sector. And the private sector is, is an asset in our, in our country. You know, we have taken learnings over, you know, several decades around um, the particular demographics, uh, patterns of disease, patterns of practice and we've built solutions, you know, including very expensive IT systems, um, intellectual property, um, as well as other health solutions and, um, you know, reimbursement models between providers and administrators that have been tailored for, for our environment and our need. So what we're saying is that we have this wealth of assets, um, capabilities that can be used in the implementation of, of NHI. Um, as the legislative process concludes, we need to start thinking at a practical level how NHI will be capacitated and rolled out into our country. And from that perspective, the private sector is, is, is signaling a, a large flag to say that, uh, you know, the private sector has the capability uh, and uh, we need to find a, a collaborative way, you know, preferably through private-public partnerships because we're currently administering, you know, uh, claims to the value of over 260 billion rand in the private sector. Uh, Dr. And, Ali, uh, we, we're going to have to leave it there. I'm afraid the, the line is, the is not playing ball. Uh, but we uh, we're speaking to we Dr. Ali Hamdele, who is the CEO at the Metropolitan Health Group about the National Health Insurance Bill, which in itself is a noble intervention to give uh, universal health care uh, access uh, to all South Africans and all who live in it uh, and to give people dignity, especially in your time of need.